Let them go. Ready? One, two, three. Can you imagine how hard it is and what it means to lose your home and to have to settle down somewhere else? Now this is already Hitler in Vienna. That's our house looked with the swastikas on it. The Nazis, they were not able to organize the deportation into the concentration camps. We were able to get 40,000 apartments in Vienna free of Jews. So they installed collection apartments where they collect Jews who were waiting for that deportation into the concentration camps. And Freud's apartment was one of them. You have to re-envision what is not here anymore. It's like a church because it's empty and has this aura of a spiritual place. The awful and also psychological thing is that you could not believe. That's right. You could not believe that their neighbors and their own people you are so close with and will kill you. The human being cannot imagine that. It was the same way with Freud. And you can see in his face his resignation. I'm here, I'm born, born in Vienna, and my parents came from Bosnia with 12 and 16 years. My name is Burak Aslan, I'm born here, and I, my parents come from Turkey. My name is Esra, I'm born in Austria, and my uh, parents come from uh, Turkey. My parents are from Bosnia and Serbia. I think there are things that one doesn't want to believe. It was really when the Gestapo arrested Anna that he really realised that he had to leave. There you can see Anna's rain hat, the plastic rain hat that was um, in the coat pocket a little ticket that we found as well. All the artefacts and his collection of antiquities and the famous couch and his chair are all in London, where he, you know, he managed to get out about a thousand objects just before the beginning of the war. possession of an object by someone of significance transforms the object very much like um, relics of the past. So in some ways I see this as a kind of an equivalent of say something like the Turin Shroud. It's part of the process of transformation that happens within art. This project is about a kind of reverse journey a kind of reminder that what has been lost, a reminder of the risk and trauma of enforced journeys and immigration. I took a picture from my aunt jewelry. Uh, I took a picture from uh, documents. I took a picture with roses and a sheet with notes. 
because I'm in love with music and I love the nature. So we invited uh, a group of school pupils to send me a photograph of their most precious object. I took a picture from my football. Two stones and one necklace. And I took a picture of my running shoes. I forgot to take a picture. And they sent me their photographs and I've then integrated those into designs for postcards which bring together their precious object with an object from Freud's desk which was his group of antiquities that he looked at every day of his life when he was working. With the idea of launching them from balloons from Vienna is to highlight the risk in immigration. And what is being forgotten is the huge risk, both to them, their families, their future, that these people feel forced to take in order to build a life. OK, one, two, three, go. We were able, in our art action, to release these messages into the sky. And they hope that some postcards will find their way back. There's an invitation on each postcard to return it to me, care of the museum in London. So it's going to be interesting to see how many postcards make that precarious journey. I like the contrast between major events and minor events and, you know, whether one's famous or not. You know, we all intersect with moments in history and that suddenly brings a greater significance to bear on things that we do, say or make. It was particularly significant that he had an egg before his final trip to London, uh, along with um, a glass of Vermont. The thing that characterizes 21st century is the mass upheaval of people. In some ways in England, where on one level one is incredibly secure and we have a relatively stable existence, I think that can actually heighten one's awareness of how fragile that state is and that at any moment your world can change. So all the objects really are kind of surrogates for um, what I imagine are kind of essential objects for a journey. A traveling clock, a clock for travel, so within its name is its meaning. I imagine that for, um, for a journey you'd need a clean shirt, toothbrush, toothpaste, a cigar, the death of Freud, unspectacular things that one might take you know, for a journey. Paul will bring back reproductions of Freud's antiques that in former times were here in the study and on the desk of Freud. When you see all these objects on the desk, they have a slight ethereal quality, you know, that the light passes through them a little bit and they become, in a way, a little less substantial. And uh, what I hope is the connection with a kind of ghost or apparition becomes more apparent. The fact that the work is permanently held in London, in a way there is an argument to say that it belongs in Vienna, where he did all his work. show to the world that the two sides, the one side in Vienna and the other side in London, are the two sides of one coin.
less postcards that arrive that make the journey, the more poignant the metaphor. And the, the fact that one has made it gives hope. In the end, I succeeded. But the struggle is not yet over. Mein Heim in Wien und kam nach England, wo ich mein Leben in Freiheit zu enden hoffe. Mein Name? Äh, Sigmund Freud. <lacht>